Hey, hey everybody, how are ya? So we are live. We are live with the show. Did you guys get your notifications from uh, YouTube? I don't know if you did. Uh, I certainly didn't. I think I just got it now, even though I scheduled this a while back. How is everybody doing? Hmm. There seems to be conversation going on. Good, good, good. So we're starting a little early today. Give me a second. All right. Hey, guys. How are you, Rob? How are you? What's going on? Greetings from Barcelona. Yes. There we go. 67 notification received about 60 seconds ago. Wow. I scheduled this a long time ago. How are you doing, Colleen? How are you? Uh, let's see what it is. How important are animation libraries like GZAP and Anime.js for front-end dev? Very niche, unless you're doing a lot of animation. Very niche. Uh, can you play some drums? Yeah, man, not today, but maybe another day. I have to set it up, get a better camera angle. So when we get about 100 people on, I'm going to jump into the subject of the day, and then we'll jump into it. So I hope everybody is doing well. Yeah, so get used to this view here, because in about 30 days, bye, 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 I'll be out of here, moving to a new place. So um, yeah, hello from Algeria. Welcome to the show. Hello from Steph. Uh, when are you going to do, when are we going to have live drum sessions? You know, I might do one just before I leave. I'm sure my neighbors will appreciate that. Uh, WordPress has been a huge opportunity for PHP developers for many years. Could you compare and contrast the opportunity of developing for sh the Shopify ecosystem? I, I, I like that comparison, that, that analogy does make sense to me. Um, yeah, I think they're... There are ecosystems where independent contractors and developers can definitely uh, profit from, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> personality type of software developers like craft beer. I guess, are you asking the developer personality type who likes craft beers? <laughs> Let me know, Rich, what you think. Um, uh, gonna be charging hosting, changing hosting providers recommendation. If you want to get into some pretty advanced stuff without going too crazy, I, you might want to look at digital ocean, uh, virtual pipe servers. You're gonna have to know your, uh, dev app, DevOps, excuse me. You're going to have to understand server configs and so on. So there's a bit of a learning curve. Um, if that's for a more sophisticated type of application, but if you're looking to put up your basic website, then any hosting uh, company out there, as long as they have good support, they return your calls. Uh, hold on, what's Viking saying here? Steph, did you hear about Ruby libraries being infected with Bitcoin stealing code? Is that true? I haven't heard that. <laughs> there you go. See, I warned you about Ruby. Told you a long time ago, now it's stealing all your Bitcoins. Uh, let's see what we got here. Thoughts on COBOL. Now, there's money in it if you want to get to it. All right, we're at 90, 96, 99 people. When we hit 100, we'll jump into the subject of the day, and then we'll go to your Q&A. All right. Uh... Let's see. My friend suddenly feels that he doesn't have a passion for programming anymore. Any advice? Try different types of programming. There are many different types of programming. If you're doing Java backend, it's very different than doing front-end uh, React or Vue.js with JavaScript. Very different from Node. 
with Express, you know, um, try different types of programming. You may find different types of programming more fun. There are certain types of programming I would not want to do personally. All right, so we got enough people here. Let's just jump into this um, quick topic. It's based on an email was sent to me uh, yesterday or day before. Kind of liked it. And uh, then we'll go to the Q&A. So let's jump into that now. All right, so um, I just threw this together based on the email. When questions are put to me on the, rare, on the occasion, you know, I get to answer maybe one out of 100, 200 questions that are sent to me because I get too many and uh, I have other things, you know, in on my plate. So the personality of a developer building and building an internet-based business. So I'm just going to read out this email and I'll answer things along the way. And then we can go into a discussion. For the last year or so, I've been looking into various business coaching programs, taking online courses for marketing of internet-based businesses. I've also spent a lot of time in self-analysis. I know that one needs to have a so-called high income skill that provides high perceived value in the marketplace, then build from there. And also, one needs to know themselves well enough, very well, to choose the right type of business to be in, 100%. I talk about that all the time. You need uh, something that has a perceived high value so that you know that you can start charging, number one. Number two, you got to do stuff that you like. Don't just jump into programming with Python AI because you hear there's a lot of money in it. At the end of the day, any type of development can earn you a lot of money if you structure yourself properly. So uh, you have to choose what you like to do, right? That's such an important thing. Uh, where, where are we? Where are we? I am an introvert. Uh, I also, I am fundamentally a rebel and I am an individualist. These are good qualities for entrepreneurs, whether you set up your own SaaS, you start freelancing, good qualities for entrepreneurs. Because entrepreneurs, um, I can tell you, having been in the game for 250 years, entrepreneurs have to be independent thinking. If you're a, a sheeple, and you just follow what everybody tells you what to do, then you might have some difficulty as an entrepreneur. In that situation, you might want to get into like maybe setting up a franchise, like a McDonald's franchise or something, where they tell you what to do, they give you your product, they tell you what to promote. But if you're a true rebel, an individualist, if that's a word, then you have to learn to think on your own, do your own things. And a lot of times you're going to be going against uh, the flow. But that's how the innovators innovate, right? So, yeah, that's a good personality trait in terms of being an entrepreneur. Uh, okay. Uh, my professional training is in music. In 2011, I started messing with code because I wanted and needed a website and thought if I can learn how to do it, it would give me superpowers to not be dependent on any web designers, etc. One good thing about this author they know how to write well, so it's to the point, concise, and doesn't put me to sleep. So I learned XHTML, CSS, and some JS and some PHP. Just in case you guys don't know, uh, XHTML, which is kind of, it's basically XML, which is a markup language. It's the granddaddy of markup languages, and you get other languages under that. Anyhow, XHTML was, uh, they created a derivative of it called uh, excuse me, XML was created, they created a derivative of XML called XHTML, which basically mimicked HTML and had very strict rules. And for several years, it was very pro popular. I never liked it. I wrote pieces and uh, again, it went, went against the grain saying that it got in the way of productivity. Anyway, long story short, HTML5 came around, which was based on practical application, but then on code purity and XHTML is no longer used anymore. Anyway, uh, let's get back to it. Um, and since then, I've been utilizing my miniature superpowers when I need them. So web design kind of became a weird hobby. So that's, yeah, that's it. See, I learned HTML and uh, coding and Perl and other uh, classic uh, VB script, et cetera again, to support my original business, which had nothing to do with coding. Okay, here are the goals, here are the goals. Number one, I want to have a high income. Coding qualifies because the perceived high value 
excuse me, the, pre the perceived value is high in the eyes of the prospects, which is true. It is high in demand, which is true, and has a high earning potential, which is also true. Why? Because of the previous two things, right? Coding is generally compatible with my introverted personality, and I like it. Yeah, if you're a freelance developer, especially in the first little while, you'll be working a lot on your own, so you got to be able to work on your own. Number two, I want to build a business. Since March 2019, I've been exploring various ways of making money online. Having no experience in online business, I've been taking courses and trying to trying out some things to see if I like them. So far, I've tried social media management, building a YouTube channel, affiliate marketing, Shopify, and SEO. Now I'm looking to tie everything together. I want to build a great e-com site in my chosen niche. I envision YouTube as my main marketing tool. I want to use SEO to prop up my products and blog posts to page one of search engines. Yeah, that's a good strategy. It's... Um, you have to figure out what your niche is. That's the first and foremost what you have to do. Um, the niche, whether it be a service or a product that you sell, you have to figure that one out first. Once you got that, that's the foundation. Then you can start building out your marketing strategy. Depending on your niche, you're going to choose a different platform to uh, promote on and to promote with. So, for example, if you were a uh, maker of custom masks, well, since we're talking about COVID now, if you created custom masks for people, you know, I don't know, I'm just coming up with an idea. You might want to go on um, networks that promote arts and crafts. I forget the, I forget which one. There's one out there, Etsy, I think it is. There's big ones out there. If, on the other hand, if you have business-centric um, or business-targeted uh, services that you're going to provide or you have a product, you might want to go on LinkedIn and so on and so forth. So your niche, besides everything else, is going to help you determine the uh, marketing angle that you're going to uh, pursue. Okay, let's, let's get back to this. To be effective at SEO, in my opinion, you got to know code. Yeah, you should know code for sure. That's because the site speed and junk URLs will lower ratings in a heartbeat. Yeah, yeah, I haven't looked at the latest data on uh, SEO now and how Google weighs um, uh, factors in your site, but site speed has always been issues. And yeah, junk URLs. Let me explain what that means so I'll let you guys know. That's one of the oldest principles. A junk URL is, let's say you have a site and you're talking about um, mice. You sell mice. You, talk, you, you do a whole bunch of... Um, you have a bunch of articles on mice and configuring mice. I don't know. I'm just coming. You know, mice what you use on your keep on your computer, and then you have a, a link to a gambling site or to a, I don't know a site on uh, uh, drumsticks or something. That's not going to be good. That would be a junk URL within that context because Google is when they're evaluating web pages, websites. They're looking at the purity of the content in the site. They want sites that specialize. They want nicheified sites. They are interested in the, the long tail. If you haven't read that book, you should pick up that book. Google's base algorithm is based on long tail principles of economics. Um, if there's enough interest in that, I can cover that if you wanted to. So a junk URL is context, is context specific. As I said, if your site is on, I don't know, mice, you better have all kinds of links going to mice, keyboards, things related to mice. You don't want to have things uh, going to unrelated subjects, any links, rather, to unrelated subjects. And whatever you do, you don't want to have links to gambling sites, um, black hat sites, nefarious sites, uh, porn sites. I'm not making a qualitative judgment on any of these things. It's just that there are certain types of content. Uh, Alex Jones, you want to point to Alex Jones, that will get you in trouble as an example. Again, I'm not making a qualitative comment here. I'm just saying um, there are certain subjects that are taboo in the eyes of the Google and other uh, big social media engines. So keep that in mind. So let's finish off. From the marketing perspective, okay, from a marketing perspective, sites have to look decent, true, and have to be practical, true. They also have to be very usable, very usable. People have to uh, find them usable and they want to stay there. You want people to want to stay on your site. The longer people stay on your site, the more pages they browse, the Google will say, hey, that's a good site. So they will push your ranking up. I find that pick, fixing up people's sites with SEO in the mind, in mind can be super lucrative service 
to offer as well. Yeah, this is all true, right? This is person here. Oh, by the way, this is a book to read. People ask about books. Here's a book to read on writing well. William Zinzer, one of the key books I would recommend reading if I were you. So, all right, that's the end of that email. Let's get into the discussion. So, yeah, um, when you're getting out there, when you're first starting off, when you want to do online business, you've got to, I always say you have to have a base in code. Not if you necessarily, you're gonna, and it's not necessarily you're going to be a coder, but just having that base in code is going to make you much more aware, much more capable as an online entrepreneur. Hmm. Just being able to set up simple things like WordPress sites and Shopify's, adding links, examining links, understanding the, the basis of uh, social media marketing and uh, search engine marketing, regard what, whatever business you happen to get into, that's a very important thing for sure. So yeah, sh you're right on the right on the, the mark there. Now the other thing I'll comment on is I like how this person is looking at all kinds of different angles. You want to do that because you never know what's going to work. And uh, so you have to try different things. Uh, one of the things they talk about in the startup world, they talk about fail quickly. Uh, fail quickly. This is something I learned a long time ago uh, as a small business owner. You don't want to sp spend too much time burning through your money and your time on an idea that, you, that ends up failing. So you want to get something out as quickly as, do, as possible. You want to see it uh, fail as quickly as possible if it's going to fail. So that's a, a good idea. So what she's, what this person is doing is they're exploring different ideas, they're going in different directions, and they're going to figure out what works for them. What may work for this person it might not work for you because it could, could be personality driven. It could be um, it could be geography driven. It could be a timing issue. It could be a contact issue. And uh, Sherry, there you go. So I think that covers that email. Is there any questions related to this particular topic? Uh, if not, then I'm going to get into the Q&A section of this whole broadcast. Let me know. Let's see, how many people did I bore? Not bad, 149 people. 34 thumbs up. If you like this topic, you like me introducing topics like this, give me a thumbs up. Let me know. All right, so let's, um, let's answer a couple questions as they come in. Hi, Stefan. There we go. Hold on. Uh, would you prefer PHP or Python for scraping? Probably Python. We're a small dev team trying to decide. Currently built a prototype of PHP, but considering Python scraping, I, I'm under the impression. Uh, I'm under the impression that uh, Python has uh, more robust tools for uh, scraping. So that's uh, where, where I would go with. But if you can make it work with PHP, do that. What I would do is I would just look at what libraries are available in PHP for scraping versus Python and see how they balance out. If you already start with PHP and you find that the libraries are pretty robust in PHP, then I would go PHP. If not, then go Python. Uh, I say go PHP because I assume you seem to already have a PHP background there. Um, it's more complex than ever now, so that's understandable. I lose track of the JS frameworks and libraries. Yeah, there's too many. Uh, I've seen this before. You see this, not just in JS world, but all these worlds. Java, there's like... Psh, 10,000 frameworks out there. And I remember I got into framework hell as well, where I was trying to learn this and that. I was jumping around all over the place. At the end of the day, you know, it was a big waste of time. You know, it's good to learn, you know, the sm a smattering of frameworks. What are the predominant ones? Why are they doing it? Understand the thinking behind the major frameworks. And then when you do that, uh, you'll, you'll uh, be able to more quickly decide which one you're going to use and just continue from there. Uh, the personality type of a software dev, I'd be surprised if all of them realize we're actually in lockdown. <laughs> yes, yes there, could, <laughs> there could be some truth to that. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, what expectations do you have with Flutter and Fuchsia? I don't know Fuchsia, but I think Flutter has a lifespan ahead of it. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Favorite web development IDE? Oh, you know, good ones out there. I would take a look at Visual Studio Code. It seems to be uh, it seems to be knocking that one out of the park. Although there's a lot of good ones out there. Let's see what Uzara has to say. Is a career shift possible, and what steps should we consider before jumping from one career to the other? Well, 
you got to look at uh, the job prospects and other careers and how we rate in the salary prospects. That's an issue. You got to look at the, uh, the type of businesses uh, that, uh, you know, where that career would res reside. You want to make sure that environment is the type of environment you'd want to work in. Yeah, those are the two best, big things, personally. Uh, how are we doing here? Okay. Um, okay, I'm just going to help out with some conversation here. Uh, hold on, let me scroll around. I missed one. Hmm. Uh, nice. Hello from Ubezkistan. Ah, very cool. Well, people from all over the world. Sorry, I messed up my... Uh, uh, all right, I have a fear that even if I have my fundamentals well and GitHub projects and stuff, the process of getting a job seems hard and scary. What do you think? That's normal. First time you do anything, it's uh, it seems hard and scary. This is where the fail fast is uh, comes that principle comes into play. Uh, you got your fundamentals, you got some projects, do a couple freelance jobs. This should be in my video FAQ, and this just apply to jobs. Who cares if you mess up uh, two, three, four, five interviews? Doesn't matter. I had a friend of mine, highly experienced Java guy. It took him like a year before he got a new job, you know? Part of it was that he was in his mid-50s, but uh, nonetheless, he's, he's doing great now. He, he just won an award for one of the best coders there. But, you know, he had a lot of hard time. Um, he, had a lot, he had a hard time uh, just finding work. It's just normal. DD says, buy junk links, meaning automatic sites that WordPress generates categories, for instance, dead project, product listing pages and broken links. Yeah, that, that would qualify as junk links as well. Yeah, 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 that definitely, definitely. Yeah, there are systems you can put into place and structures you can put in place to minimize that. Uh, wait, what do you mean by lockdown? <laughs> hmm. Would Haskell be a good niche to get into freelance-wise? Probably not. Niche is not based on language necessarily. Uh, niche is based on um, a business model or product type. Although language could fall into that, like COBOL, you can consider it kind of a niche, if you will, being a COBOL developer. Haskell, I'm not too sure. You know, I, I, I have my doubts, but I, on, in all honesty, I've never looked into Just look at the job listings. Look at the job listings. I love the lockdown. I'm seeing extroverts punished, punished for once. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, exactly. Us introverts were like, eh, nothing has really changed. Beautiful soup is good for Python scraping. Yes, beautiful soup. I heard uh, good things about it. And they combine that with one other uh, lib. I forget what it is all of a sudden. But yeah, yeah. Flutter is great for mobile. It is just not ready for the web. Yeah, I haven't looked at Flutter uh, for web. I was when I looked at it, I looked at it in terms of its mobile positioning. Uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, I want to build a web app, but ignore the general structure of apps. Relation between front and back end. Should I check out code of classic chat app in order to figure out the general structure? Yeah, take a look. Always. Don't reinvent the wheel. See how other things, how other, excuse me, how other people have built things. See how they've done things, and then uh, maybe look at one or two other uh, ideas and see whether or not you can improve upon them. Right? Never reinvent the wheel. Reuse, reuse, reuse. Top three, top three rules of programming. Mm, let's go on. Let's go on. Uh, I really want to look into Flutter. Yeah, yeah, uh, okay. Well, uh. Why is a hooded sweater jacket common among software developers, at least around here in Silicon Valley? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe because they're all imitating uh, Zuckerberg. Or maybe because nerds just tend to want to wear hoodies. I don't know. I was a hoodie wearer at one point, but not for many years now. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, Body Ahmed asks, Hey, Stefan, do you think Python is a good choice for serious back end development? Sure. Some major, major applications have built with Python, major ones. So, you know, I think uh, Instagram is Python. So, yeah, you can do good stuff there. 
I've been enjoying studying cold while having a glass of wine at night. Very relaxing time. There you go. That's how you do it. Whenever you're doing something new, if you're learning how to code or whatever it is, um, try to associate the learning process and the process of, of doing it with something enjoyable so that your brain is in, emotionally will say, hey, let's, let's do some more code. Let's do some more code. A bit of uh, our brains come up with its opinions on things a lot, oftentimes, or actually most of the time, based on association. So associate fun times, good times, relaxed times with coding, and all of a sudden coding will be fun, relaxed, and uh, good times. Uh, what else we got here? Uzar Farouk says, thanks, Steph. Not a problem. I'm happy to help. Hi from Oman. Fantastic. Wow. All over the world, all over the world. Hi from Alberta. Hey, how you doing? I have a uh, cousin who lives in uh, Edmonton. Uh, in the past few weeks, I started learning Flutter. Was this framework designed as a bet? Why do you say that? Let me know. Uh, how to transition from web dev to cloud computing. Start learning cloud computing. And then uh, slowly dip your toe into that world. <laughs> How was the drilling? Did they finish or you took care of them? I can't talk about that. Mm. Apps without code, only for prototyping, only for prototyping or very simple things. There is a long history of companies coming out with codeless app development and uh, with varying levels of success. Um, the best was actually Microsoft with VB, VB6. And there, it was it was kind of a blend. There was a lot of drag and drop, and you would just bind uh, behavior to your um, your widgets, your your components in, on, this, on the views. These are for Windows-only apps. And they do it to a certain extent with uh, ASP.NET, but you still have to code. It's, uh, I, I don't see for a long time... Uh, being able to develop any sophisticated apps without code because there's always custom logic. So, and you and at, at the end of the day, the hard part a bit about writing software is architecture, global planning, and uh, so yeah, there you go. It's like the coding aspect is almost like the uh, last stage of it all. How difficult would it be for me to pick up Firebase if if I'm not bad at PHP one year? But probably learn pretty quickly. Probably very quickly, so I wouldn't be too concerned about. Uh, there's a debate going on here. I'll let these two discuss. Uh, okay, what else? Mexico City. Whoa, fantastic. That's a good place. What else? X86. Is there any big caveats to using your own PHP script to read from a MySQL database if properly vetted? Or do you always have to use suggest? Are you or do you always suggest using a framework? No, custom PHP with the MySQL MySQL on uh, MySQL I library or PDO is uh, fine. You know, just do the basic uh, scrubbing so that you don't have no uh, in, uh, SQL attacks, but is built into uh, the library. So you're fine. You're fine. Um, as the project becomes more complex and as you have more developers on a project, you have to lean more and more heavily on uh, frameworks. Uh, what do we got here? Stefan, I want to sign up for your course. I want to learn JavaScript. Do I get it at Studio Web? It looks like it's courses for students. Is the right one for me. Yeah, it's, it's fine. It's... Um, You'll find that uh, I have a range of age levels from middle school to university who uses Studio Web. Uh, the school-based uh, courses are slightly different, so you'll be fine getting them at the Studio Web store. You'll learn a ton, like everybody else, and you can't lose. There's always there's a money back guarantee. Uh, the refund rate to have is less than one percent, and it's because people decide they're going to do something else. Uh, so. I'm very confident you'll be happy with it. Uh, here we go. Here we go. So, Boris, uh, yes. you can create a web app as a free trial and then deliver your native apps to users without any ads and so on. And you can use Flutter for all that. Beautiful. There you go. 
Boris is letting us know. Fantastic. Thanks. Um, I want to reuse, but for some reason, I always feel like I'm being pulled to write stuff myself. Well, that's normal for a nerd. Nerds have this. I was like that too. I want to build my own thing, you know, and I've actually built my own frameworks. Um, but I highly advise, given my 269 years of experience developing, that you do not write things from scratch if you can avoid it. Sometimes you have to, but generally speaking, you wouldn't, especially core things like an ORM or MVC framework or authentication layers. Uh, these common um, utility uh, functions, if you will, should not be developed from scratch because they've been worked out, refined so many times that it's crazy to roll your own. That is for sure. All right. Thorvald. He's a friend of Thor. Uh, he's, uh, he's from Valhalla. I got my first job by just by showing a full stack project on an, on the interview. It wasn't massive, but it fit the profile of the company. Just make something that might have value, even if small. Exactly. Now, if you want to supercharge that strategy, do two or three small ones for actual companies, little companies, and they're going to hire you over a computer science major pretty darn quick. Why? Because you show that you can actually produce, you can work with other people, and you can work with clients. That makes you so valuable. Yeah. That's why I, 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 I give my, my step strategy of getting a job. Foundations, freelance, small projects, build a portfolio, build a reputation, get the job, you win. Uh... Right now, I'm doing your Python course. I will finish next week. What do I do next? I want to get into software dev. Well, there's different types of software dev. If you want to do the web stack, do my web stack courses. Uh, if you want to do any type of other Python specialization, you could ask that question. I can give you suggestions. Um, that being said, once you feel you have your basic skills, then go out there and, like I said, find that stagiaire-like uh, freelance gigs, what you do for free to learn, build your portfolio. Yada, yada, I just said, you'll get your job. Excuse me. Do you have any idea why the demand for PHP is declining? I don't know if it is declining. If it is declining, it's declining from a mountain this high. And it's got a long way to go before it gets down to other languages. So PHP is going to be here for a long time, but it doesn't matter anyway, because if you do PHP and you find in 10 years from now or five years from now, the demand is slow, which I would doubt. But if you find yourself in a position to pivot to Python or to JavaScript will be pretty, pretty easy. Uh, is software job make you exhausted mentally? It can. Uh, that's why I, I talk about... Um, pacing yourself you want to exercise pace yourself drink lots of water eat healthy food trust me that plays a big role um, and don't just do one thing don't burn yourself out take breaks you know uh, colleen's asking a question uh, Main Street Studio, I hope I'm not late. Oh, you're almost late because it's 34 minutes and I'm about to end the broadcast. I'm trying to keep these down time-wise. Uh, what is, oh, here we go. What is the best niche for developers? The one that makes you the most money and gives you the most fun. So you have to search that out for yourself because I don't know where you are. You, you might be in Eastern Europe. You might be in Pakistan. You might be in Southern California. Where you are... Uh, Oh, look, see, Mr. Hamad will tell you what's popular in Pakistan. It might be the same as what's popular in Germany. It might not be. I don't know. You got to look into that. It's all local. It's all local. All right, all right, all right. Uh, here's a good question. Ian Tindall, who here uses a standing desk at home? I used two a few years ago, but don't now. Sofa, too tempting. I actually got a standing desk mechanism adapter that was sent to me by a product vendor. I don't do too many product spots 
I did this mouse recently, which is the best mouse I ever used. This is the um, the Logitech mouse and keyboard. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I used it for like a week or two, and then I just stopped. Now, when I need to stand up, I stand up and I go for a walk, I go for a coffee, I go to the gym. Uh, some people really like them, but personally, I didn't find them too useful. When I move, I'm going to just leave it in the apartment for the next person to use. Uh, uh, we'll see, let's we'll see what we got here. Stefan Mischik, hey, I want to write a source for a command and control source. What language should I write it in? I want to write a source for a command and control source. Mm, I know what you mean. Uh, is software job a lucrative enough to make you millionaire? Yes, I know people who are multi-millionaires just working for people. A big part of it, though, is consistent investment over time. How is the best way to learn negotiation and sales? Uh, you learn the basics of negotiation and sales, find a couple of books, and then just start negotiating and doing sales. And the best way to do things is to, to learn how to do something is to do it. I always tell people, how did I learn how to fight? By getting into fights. That's it. I tell you. I used to tell people one three-round sparring, hardcore sparring match, is worth six months of hitting the pads and doing techniques in the air. All right, what else do we got here? Oh, okay, okay, okay. We got okay. We got these guys. Uh, can I? I'm gonna have to look at some moderation here if you guys keep posting too many at a time. Is learning C? Oh, who's good? Is learning C language a good, still a good idea? Why not? But again. If, if it's your first language, I'd rather learn Python or uh, JavaScript uh, just because it's more approachable and there's broader applications, which means more job opportunities. I will be 57 this year and still coasting since 1998 and still costing. Coasting, costing? Uh, a little bit of ageism encountered. Depends on the company team. Still costing. Coding must be coding. Still coding since '98. A little bit of ageism counted, depending on the team. Yeah, I could see that. Um, if you go work for larger organizations, um, you're gonna have you're gonna have uh, more controls to protect you from that. Um, if you freelance, it won't be an issue. I think there's a lot of opportunity to, for people in that age bracket in terms of freelance because. One of the trends in North America, and I would imagine Europe, is that the baby boomers are all now all starting second careers. Some because they have to, some a lot of them because they want to. They're starting little businesses, and they're going to need people to help them put up their site, and whether it be a Shopify site, a WordPress site, or a site from scratch. Need them to help them configure, set up a few different things, and. Um, the fact that you're in that general age range will make you relatable to them. So there'll be a trust issue there, or oh, a well, trust advantage there. Call no words. I think, like Stefan said, these sorts of apps can have their have, have their uses often. They are not the full solution. Yeah, that's the code generation, I guess. Yeah. Uh, let's see what's going on here. The mouse curse you had before, laugh out, laugh out loud, I now have it with my headphones and it annoying laugh out loud. How are you in this stay at home? Trying to interpret that, I guess it's, he was writing very quickly, typing very quickly, or English is not his first language, one or the other. Um, staying at home is fine, although I'm getting pretty busy I'm starting to get ready for my move. I bought a new place uh, downtown, and uh, I have to arrange for movers and contractors. I've been giving away uh, furniture. Uh, I found that I had documents going back uh, 30 years that I'm now destroying, and it's because I don't want to have to move them around anymore. It's difficult with the COVID because I can't bring, for instance, uh, furniture to the Goodwill. I can't bring oh, a bunch of books to the Goodwill. Uh, so that's taking up a lot of my time. So I'm not, I'm not unbusy during this lockdown. All right, guys and girls, it's 39 minutes and 59 seconds, 40 minutes. We're going to have to, um, come to an end here. 191 users, not bad. 68. 
Give me some thumbs up love if you liked this presentation style. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, I'll you know you can send them to me. Chances are I won't be able to answer them, but uh, <laughs> you never know. If they're good questions, be concise, to the point, and uh, see what's going on there. Besides that, uh, have a great day, guys, and um, we'll talk soon. All right. See what kind of video I got for you guys. Nah, I don't have any. All right. See ya. Ciao.